Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show, it's about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of In the Dark. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Well, first and foremost, we're picking up like right where last week's episode ended. Trey's breaking into Guiding Hope, and obviously Murphy's hiding. And I was like, how would this situation play out? I mean, luckily, when it was all said and done, Trey got the drugs and bowels. He got everything. But, um... The fact of the matter is, how what would have happened if he had found Murphy? I mean, Murphy wouldn't have been able to identify him. Would he have let her go? I mean, it probably would have been a situation. Shit, she sees me, bam. So it could have, so it, it you know, but because uh, obviously at the time, Trey didn't know the relationship between Murphy and Darnell. So, but obviously, like, you know, Murphy checked all the drugs are going. She called Darnell. It's like the only person she could call in this situation. So it's like, what do we do? And it's like, it's Trey. He's, you know, in it with Josiah, so it's like he kind of needed this. So I'm going to try and get the drugs. You, you need to go buy some drugs outside of town so you can, because if, if they buy it in town, it's like you could, Nia might find out and be like, what the hell are you doing? You know, so, so now Murphy's got, you know, try and find a way to track down drugs. Sadly, by the time Darnell catches up with Trey, it's like he already turned him into Josiah. And it's like, at first he's like, why? Oh, it's, oh you picked them over someone you've known your almost entire life. He's like, no, nah, we're good. We're good. But it's like, you don't understand, man. Like Murphy, that's, that was, that was uh, Ty's best friend. And it's like, oh, so realizing like, obviously how like close Darnell was to Ty and everything. Realizing like, that's why Murphy's so important to Darnell. Like it, they have legitimately become friends over everything they went through in season one. But also because like, that was like Ty's best friend. And obviously I think looking out for Murphy is his way of kind of honoring Ty, I think, you know. But now it's a situation of like, he, like Darnell's not going to put up much of a fuss or anything. He's like, nah, I get it. Trey, you did what you had to do. So obviously he's good with Josiah. So I know, you know, but the thing is, obviously Josiah knows he's got her stash and everything. But the question didn't become, well, because I was about to say later on what's going to happen, you know, when it's all said and done. Because it's like, I would assume that Josiah would go around being like, oh, we took your stash, Nia. And if she found out like, wait, it got the Josiah, like she might start putting stuff together. And that's why I'm wondering, because like there's so much going on at the same time. It's like, well, first and foremost, we find out Felix gets arrested for a murder. My mind is immediately like, oh my God, Ben killed someone. He killed like a dealer or something. And now uh, he used um, he used Felix's gun and now it's coming back on them like that. I thought that's what it was. Lo and behold, it's none other than the damn murder van they snuck into. And it's like, and the moment he saw the van, he was like, uh, okay. And so he calls Murphy, but Murphy can't hear the phone. He calls Jess and Jess is like, holy crap. All right, Murphy, come here. They start, they're like, wait, you've been arrested. He's like, it's nothing about our other business. It's because of that van we snuck into in, in the, um, uh, the compound lot. So it's like, um, just needs, you know, it's like Murphy's like, I could lie for you, but it's like, no, let's not do that. They're going to try and find a way out of this. Sterling's listening. So she, I mean, and because it immediately went in my mind, I was like, Sterling's like, Sterling's spying on the place. So she has that, she has a camera set up. So she, it's like, oh, there she goes. She turns into recording. And obviously, like, their number one suspect is like, oh, literally, Felix was shitting. Uh, the entirety of the murder so obviously he has a clear cut alibi and the cops are going like you know what how about we mess with him a little bit they go in there kind of busting his chops making him admit what he was doing but then what I love is the fact is when it's all said and done though Felix could go he's like yeah but they're like yeah but about the trespassing and stuff like that obviously your prince got in because you were trespassing so we're gonna have to bring that up he's like actually you're not going to because if you did you'd basically jeopardize your case because you guys didn't properly check the van you know you didn't properly secure it so if you want to bring me up for trespassing you're literally going to ruin the one bit of evidence you got and that's that van so you're gonna have to let me go I'm like and did it click I was like right I keep forgetting Literally, Felix went to law school. Obviously, he didn't want to, you know, continue down that path because he wanted to go down a path different from his uh, family. Uh, but it's like, right, he's a lawyer, so he got out of it. But at the same time, Gene and Dean are walking by and they see the video and Dean's like, wait, is that Felix? And it's like, oh, yeah, like, uh, we thought he was our murder suspect. And they're like, well, he's here. Let's start questioning him. And then it's like, okay, so the fact that your fingerprints are there, that means the real reason why you were in Max's vehicle, because you're trying to transport drugs to Max or something. Well, he was like, or at least it, you were trying to get something for Max because he hadn't jumped to the conclusion of like, oh, you're connected to this whole neo drug thing yet. And then like Felix is like, all right, it was mushrooms because, you know, uh, trespassing is a lighter sentence than, um, 
drugs. He's like, I got paranoid and everything. So we didn't find any on you. He could have easily lied to me like, you didn't check pretzel. That would have that would have complicated things in the future because if that ever they ever find themselves in this situation, they're going to be more like, oh, you said we didn't check pretzel last time, so we're going to check pretzel this time. It's like, we ate it, me and Murphy, you know? And so, and I think the whole fact is of like, Murphy's like, just break in there and do it. Like Dean didn't question because it's almost like, yeah, that's Murphy. Like Murphy would be crazy enough to say something like that. So obviously he's, you know, it's like, well, we could still get you for the trespassing. It's like, oh, didn't you talk to your colleagues? Because if you do this, you take me down for trespassing, you're going to screw up two cases, their case and your Max Parrish case. So go right ahead and do that. So Gene's supposed to let him go. But it's like, by the time Gene comes back, he's like, nah, uh, the fact of the matter is this is this thing. It's Klingon related. Look. This note was written in Klingon. Felix is the one. It's like, wait a minute. And then Dean starts piecing it together. Obviously, uh, he's the con drug connect. And then the fact of the matter is that must mean Murphy. She's a part of this, too. They go through the um, prison tapes, see Max and um, Murphy. And it's like seeing the exchange of the cane and everything. It's like, we got her. It's not enough hard evidence, but it's enough to be like, well, we know she's going to be dropping the drugs off soon enough. So the fact of the matter is we just wait. So I'm like, damn it. Because the problem is it's like you don't want Dean to win. You know, it's like it's a sucky situation that, you know, they find themselves in because they're caught between the whole caught up in the whole Nia thing. But also this Dean thing, like because it's like, oh, I'm trying to get justice. It's like like I, I can't stress it enough every time because it's, cause it's such a complicated, fascinating thing because it's like, oh, here is him doing his job. But it's own it's self-preservation. It's like you were literally working with Nia before and now you're trying to so hard to, because it's about, you know, making up because once again, I think he thinks it's going to make up for all that he's done to cover his tracks, all the murder and stuff like that, you know. But regardless, so there's that. Then there's the whole situation, like, you know, it's like, okay, we got to go buy drugs. Murphy needs uh, Jess's help. If he, if she, if Felix was out, she'd go to him. But it's like, I literally have nowhere else to kind of turn in this situation. So she said, you can just tolerate me for the next two hours. Uh, ben overhears everything. He's like, okay, like, what happened? You know, it's like, oh, where's Felix? He owes him $500. Yeah, I know about the drugs and everything. Okay, uh, so I'll be at my desk if, if any of y'all have the money. And they're like, and Murphy's like, oh, we'll give you a thousand if you tell us where to buy drugs. They give him the money and everything. He's like, oh, what happened? Your drugs get stolen or something? It's like, well, I'm sure if we told us he no longer has blackmail evidence over uh, Felix now, so that works out. But still, it's just kind of doesn't help them with the whole Nia situation. So they go out with his contact, buy drugs. It's only a little bit. It still can't even fully cover what they're supposed to transport for Nina. But, it, you know, it, they can't even be, they're not even beginning to, like, recollect all that they lost. So on the way back, they break down. And then we get into a really, like, a heart, like, complicated, heartfelt thing between, uh, between, uh, Murphy and Jess and it's sad because the sad thing is like part of me was wondering like maybe over this like some shenanigans happen and they'll you know repair the relationship it's like no things completely break down because for Jess it's like we're caught in this complicated cycle of like ever since we were 14 you do something stupid I do something even dumber to help you out and then you know I get mad at you but you forgive and then you ask do you apologize and I forgive you and so it's like a cycle they've been trapped in since they were teenagers since they were friends you know and because it's you know so for Jess she kind of like we're caught in this codependent thing and it's like for her she's like there was a part of me that almost kind of got off by the fact is that you needed me like I could be the only person you let touch stuff or do like helping you in some shape or form that was always a thing for Murphy but now it's changed I mean obviously like she eventually it took a while but she eventually let Max help her and obviously her and Felix have gotten closer and everything so it you know obviously like I, I'm sure Murphy would say that begrudgingly but like yeah they've gotten closer so for her, it's just kind of like, you don't, I mean, even aside from anyone helping you, you don't need my help anyway. Like, considering all that you're doing, you don't need my help. So, Jess is kind of like, you know, the fact of the matter is, it's like, she wants a kind of clean break. Because it's like, we're kind of trapped in this cycle and it just, it needs to be broken. We both need a fresh start. And it's that, because the sad thing is, like, Jess is without undoubtedly Murphy's one and only friend that's her best friend but it's like what kind of best friends are we like this is basically in her mind it's like this is a toxic relationship like we have with each other this isn't a friendship it's just kind of like you know this cycle we're in but it's like especially and that's sad because like for Murphy it's like in her mind it, this is the closest thing she's ever had to a friend like you've been friends you were the friend she's been that she's known had by her side since losing her sight and everything so like a lot of her foundation is gone you know so, because we'll remember last season they brought it up, like, 
one of the last memories she had of before she lost her sight. Was that last season? Was this season? I'm fairly certain it was last season. The last memory she had of losing her sight was, you know, Jess. You know, so that was like the last thing she like held pictured in her head was like them at that like when they were like 14 and everything. So, but it's just like now that's kind of falling apart and everything. And like, honestly, she has no other friends. Like, once again, like, you know, sure, she's, you know, tight with some people, but it's like even then it's like this is her f- a friend, for one, it's a friend who's kind of known you before things kind of got like that and after. So it's just, it, it, there's a there's a special kinship with that relationship. So so by the time they get back, Darnell kind of explains everything that he apologizes that things worked out like this. So he's telling Murphy, blame me. And it's like, wait, what? Like, if we do that, she'll kill you. But Darnell reveals, like, she won't. Um, she's my sister. And I'm like, wait, what? Holy shit. So that was so interesting because that always made me wonder. I was like, why did she give Darnell a second chance after that Max thing? She doesn't seem like the type that, oh, I'm going to give you a second chance. So I was like, why? And now in retrospect, too, it might make understandable why she acted the way she did the moment she found out Dean killed Tyson. Like the moment because she's like, oh, you killed one of my people. It's like, no, you killed her cousin, too. Ty was her cousin, too. So she obviously like um Obviously, for uh, Darnell, it's like she likes to keep it secret. So I'm thinking, and with the way things go down, I don't even think Sam knows. So she, because if people knew, and so she doesn't want people to think she's giving him special treatment, even though she does. So once again, that's why she, why she gives him chance in, over and over again. But also why that whole like, oh yeah, you killed one of my boys. It's like, no, you killed my cousin. I, I'm sure her and like Ty weren't close like Darnell and Ty were, uh, but still. And so it's like, no, leave it to me. I'm going to take the fall for this, you know. So like I said, if anything, because he knows, like, the worst thing that could happen is, like, she won't talk to me. But for him, it's like, is that really the worst thing? Considering he's been caught up in this world ever since he was a kid. I mean, what did he want? He did all this because he wanted revenge against, you know, for, you know, Jules and everything. So it's like, I have a chance to start over. And Jess is listening to this. And I think that heavily influenced her decision. So she says goodbye to Murphy and just kind of like... You know, and Murphy doesn't know that she's like leaving, leaving. It's not like she's just moving out. She's like, I love, she leaves a sign saying like, I love you, but I got to go. Uh, Murphy ends up telling, you know, Nia about Darnell. And it's like, oh, I, I knew he was caught up on that girl, but all right, bring Darnell here. Uh, he, I said that weird, here. Um, and it's like, oh, like, you know, I, I knew it took a lot for you to do this. Murphy, and Murphy was like replying, repeating what she had said previously of like, oh yeah, like, uh, friendships are the death of in in this line of work and stuff like that and you know so Darnell gets brought there and so Nia is like no just give me a moment alone with him Sam and she's chewing into him and you see Sam's face because it's almost like Sam's like yeah get his and then like it's like wait almost like Sam's like wait what you're letting him go what no it's like go get that surveillance tape from Sterling to see what else I want to see if he did it alone and if he did are you just going to what like it's like wait you want to question me now so, because I think for Sam, she's so tired of Darnell screwing up and doing all this, and Nia letting him. Once again, she doesn't know because she made a point. Because I think out of anything too, because Sam is her most loyal, like right hand person, and just for her, it's almost like no matter what I do, it's almost like not good enough. Because apparently, like I'll never be family enough for you. Granted, once again, she doesn't know Darnell's family, but it's just kind of like I thought we were tight. But it's like no matter what, you make excuses for Darnell. Why? Once again, he's family and very close family. That's her brother and everything. So, you know, so that's a complicated situation. So I'm curious to see what Darnell does. I think Sam's not going to back down. I think Sam's going to try and gunning for Darnell. We'll see how that ends up playing out, but I don't know. And obviously for Murphy, she makes up an excuse so she can go see Max. Because she's like, yeah, he's like, another drop is ready. She's like... Yeah, because where their relationship is, she feels weird or she admits like, oh, I just want to see you because things are kind of pretty bad right now. Lo and behold, who shows up? Um, Chloe, because Chloe was talking to her friend Amber about everything. And it's just like, yeah, because once again, like Murphy was her friend. And so for her to like, oh, but my for her to say a little bad things about my dad and everything, it's like, well, yeah, maybe she's not. Well, you know, Murphy must suck or something like is what Amber was saying. So he's like, your dad, he's kind of cute. And haha, they're like, you know, trying to make her feel better. So she goes and confronts Murphy and Murphy's just like, I'm tired of like having to pay for like all your dad's lies. And he's like, what did he lie about? And she's like, you know what? Nothing. Just forget it. And she's like, oh, because I'm a kid. Everyone's treating me like one. The moment she left with the cane, I immediately was like. She took the wrong king, didn't she? I was like, because Dean is already waiting for you with Max. And I'm like, 
okay. I was like, that's it. And obviously Dean's crossing certain lines too because like Gene was like, oh, we have to let, you know, Felix go. It's been 24 hours. It's like, no, I'm your superior officer. When I say you do it, you do it. And it was just kind of like, all right. Once again, his desperation to take them all down and everything. But um, Max and, you know, Murphy kind of have an intimate moment, you know, and it's like, oh, like, so what their relation, while well, his, her relationship with, uh, her relationship with uh, Jess is getting bad. Her relationship with Max is kind of repairing. But then lo and behold, Dean shows up and he's breaking the cane. It's like, and then it's like, wait, where are the drugs? He's like, I have no idea what you're talking about. And they're both looking like, wait, what? And Dean immediately notices that too. It's like, no, they definitely know. He ends up later on, you know, they both get examined, but no drugs on them. And then obviously it clicks in Murphy's head of like, shit, Chloe's got him. Um, and Chloe got on a train, and at first she was kind of panicking. I was like, wait, is that just a panic attack, or did she, like, like, is a residue on, like, this, like, the stick or something? Like, that's what, because obviously Murphy had to package everything herself, so I was like, wondering, it's like some heroin residue got up there, and that's why it was happening, but it's like, no, she just straight up had a panic attack, because she was worried, because obviously, like, she, this is her first time alone. She's like, oh, you're not supposed to get on a train, but she did, so. But obviously this pisses Dean off, because it's like, damn it. I was so sure, like, I know they're behind this. Like, I'm, I'm not second-guessing myself. I know it. I just got to prove it. So, at the same time, all that's happening. Uh, I was hoping this was going to happen, but it didn't. When uh, when uh, Sterling opens her door, I was like, please let it be Sam. Okay, okay, it's Sam. Okay, good. Because I was like, please don't let it be Jess first. Let it be Sam first. And then I was like, okay, please let Jess see you and see Sam and Sterling talk, I was like, ooh, that'd be dope, but it's like, no, Sam ended up leaving, because she ended up being like, wait, where's that tape, it's like, yeah, Felix was in jail, so, it's like, I had to, and it's like, no, you, what, what are you, crazy, she's like, no, I had to, oh, because he was locked up, oh, because Jess, it would make Jess happy, she's like, no, like, one of Nia's people was locked up, so, I did what I needed to do, I erased everything else to prove that we, I mean, to be fair, this works out, because if not, it would have been revealed that it was Trey, uh, on that, probably could, probably could have seen Trey's face even with his hoodie up. So it could have been a situation of like they could have seen Trey's face and be like, "Wait, Darnell either is cover, like is working with them or covering for him." And that dude and Trey, oh, he works for Josiah. This is all Darnell works for Josiah. That changed a lot of things, you know. So, but uh, Sam was kind of upset because it's like, oh, obviously you care about Jess and stuff like that. That's why you're doing all this. Well, fine. Let's see how, what Nia has to say about. It. I was like, oh shit. Jess so shows up. She's like, I'm leaving Chicago. You want to come with me? Sterling's like, hell yeah, because it's like, has zero reason to stay behind, because obviously she cares about, you know, Jess, so they're, you know, kind of, kind of, um, not eloping, but obviously almost eloping, just kind of bouncing, they end up tossing their phones out the window and everything, so it's like, oh, now the thing is, and I'm curious, when is, uh, it's going to come out eventually about Sterling's connection to Nia and everything. It's got to come out, especially because of like, you know, it's so interesting because it's like, obviously like, um, it's a different circumstance, but still like, obviously the whole Dean lying to Murphy being the one that behind killing Ty and everything. Like, I'm curious. We'll just have the same reaction to when she finds out about Sterling. Granted, Sterling hasn't murdered someone. Like, but still, it's like, you spied on me, you manipulated me, like, our entire relationship was based on a lie type of thing, so, it could still, I still see things being very, like, oh, we're done, but it could just be a thing of, like, no, I love you, I care about you, I want, I don't know, because I think, the, I get the feeling like Sam's going to track her down, and in the moment they had that confrontation, and then, during that confrontation, it's going to be revealed, and Jess is going to be like, wait, what, you were spying on me, you were using me? We'll see. That, like I said, uh, where things kind of stand right now. But uh, like I said, I'm curious also, like, you know, where and what Darnell's going to do with this, you know, new life and opportunity. Because I'm wondering if Josiah going to be like, oh, no, no, you work for me now. You got under Nia. You're with me, you know, so it might not be that easy to kind of walk away. Um, obviously, like I said, Murphy's trying to track down Chloe because I was like, wait, what? What's going on with that? You know, trying to get the stick back. But then, like, Dean goes and picks her up, but then finds the drugs into her stick. Now, the question then becomes, what's Dean going to do? Is he going to look at this as like, a, yes, I got him? Or is he going to be like, 
or he gonna take this personal, even though it wasn't like this, even though it was an accident, he's gonna be like, Murphy did this on purpose. You're dragging my daughter in this. I hate you. I hate you so much. And it's just like, he's gonna use this. Adopt. I mean, I figured as much the drugs could be used as an opportunity to trash Murphy even more in Chloe's, you know, uh, mind. So it's like, I mean, granted her image of Murphy's already trashed because it's like, oh, I went over there to try and talk to her, but it's like, you know, like, so sadly, Chloe doesn't realize, once again, doesn't know how much of a piece of shit her dad actually is. But like, I'm curious to see like how his reaction is going to be is it just going to be like like i said yes i got it uh so this is proof of it or is he going to think oh she did this intentional to cover her ass i don't know i'm really really interested to see ultimately where all this ends up taking us going forward into the next episode but really that's all i want to talk about so the next time we meet be happy be safe like to the fullest and enjoy it good day and goodbye